right, everyone. Welcome. My name is Ben. I'm an accountant and founder here at Mizuma. Thanks for joining us. Our topic today is small business tax deductions and what you should be looking out for as a small business owner. I'd like to remind you first that these webinars are recorded and posted to our YouTube channel. So if you like this content, feel free to go there, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Really helps us out a lot and lets us know what kind of content you want to see in the future. And as always, if you like, if you'd like more information about us, you can always head over to our website at mazumausa.com for more details. Mazuma clients can also log into their dashboards and get in contact with their tax professionals or their bookkeepers if they have any additional questions. Following the webinar, we will move into a Q&A session. So if you have any questions related to today's topic, feel free to click on the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen and type in the question. I'll do my best to get to everyone's questions today. All right, let's get started. We are gonna talk about deductions today, small business deductions. And that really begins with bookkeeping. I know it's kind of the nitty gritty detail and kind of the back, back office type side of, of things, but you have to know a little bit about bookkeeping to understand where tax deductions come from and how they help you. So we're going to cover that really quick. And then we're going to talk about how the IRS defines deductions and give you some examples of a variety of different deductions that are available to you. And then we'll go ahead and just say, okay, I got a deduction. What does that mean? What is that? How does that benefit me? That'll help you be able to make some decisions going forward. All right, so bookkeeping. What is bookkeeping? Um, it, it actually is not rocket science, all right? It does get complicated when you get into the whole scope of accounting and, and financial statements and all of that, but at its very core, its very root, bookkeeping is just about properly identifying and, and tagging or categorizing every single transaction that your business does. All right, so like here in this example, we've got a list of 10 transactions or so that might happen in an average business. We've got checks, we've got debit card transactions, we've got deposits, and they're all made with a variety of vendors like or customers and for different amounts. So the process of bookkeeping is looking at every single transaction and properly categorizing it as an expense or as an income item, and then telling you know, the system, the accounting software, what type of expense or what type of income item it is. Um, and again, we, the complexities of accounting get a little bit broad here. We're not gonna go into all that. We're not gonna talk about liabilities and loans and all of that, but here's just a, a generic list of transactions for during a month. You've got expenses, you've got some income, okay? So and if you've categorized all of these properly, then we go into the next uh, screen that shows us what a, an actual report looks like. So after we've categorized our transactions, then we can organize them into a profit and loss statement or, and something that looks like this, where we see, okay, I earned $2,000 of sales of income I spent $1,302 on all of these different category, categories. And so that leaves me with $698 of profit or net income. All right, so there's a simple little demonstration for you of, of what bookkeeping is and what bookkeeping results in. Um, and that $698 number there at the bottom is kind of key because it, is what we're gonna be paying taxes on. Okay, that's the profit that your business generated. That's what you're gonna be taxed on. So we want, yeah, we money as far as we can so that you pay as little taxes as possible. Okay, so real quick to summarize that, why do we do bookkeeping? Uh, we want financial statements 
so that we can stay organized and see where we're at with our business that helps us make good decisions, helps us budget and kind of project into the future. And also one of the primary reasons is so that we can actually have the information we need to fill out a tax return. Uh, you know, the law requires us to keep track of our records and, and end up putting that summary on a tax return somewhere. Tracking it this way also, like I said, every single transaction, business transaction is tracked so that we're uh, paying as little taxes as possible. We want to capture every single expense so that that profit number is as low as possible and therefore the taxes are as low as possible. It also helps us you know, check in during the middle of the year so we can look ahead and say, okay, if I've earned $600 in profit, how much is that going to cost me in taxes when I file my tax return? And just lastly, you know, it keeps us honest. It keeps us honest with the government. It keeps us honest with ourselves, with our anyone else who has an interest in our business. Uh, you know, we have an obligation to to follow, to to keep track of our records so that we can accurately uh, report those that information on a tax return. All right, so what is a deduction? All right, it's really, we, we hear the word deduction, we know we want them, we hear the word write-off or expense. Really, those are all the same thing. I know it's confusing. I you know, don't know why people use different terms, but, but we do. And so just know that write-off, expense, deduction, it's all the same thing. And the IRS uh, defines uh, a deduction or something that we can uh, claim as an expense on our tax return as first something that is ordinary, meaning it's an expense that is common and accepted in our trade or industry. All right. So if you're uh, a photographer, then obviously a, a common expense you're going to have is a camera um, to, to do your work with. You, maybe another common one is, is a vehicle to use for driving around or lighting or any other variety of supplies or uh, things that you need you know if if photographers usually buy these things then it is ordinary and qualifies um, so you just think about what your trade or industry is and think about what would be normal for someone for you you know for someone in your business the next kind of qualification that the irs puts out there is that the expense is necessary so that the expense is helpful and appropriate in your business. Okay, it doesn't mean that the expense is required to, to keep your business going. It just means it's helpful, all right? So you get to be the judge mostly on what, what counts as something that is helpful in furthering your business interests, whether that's to keep the lights on or to keep new customers coming in the door, right? So uh, this is really the broad, you know, you, you want to think broad when you're thinking what is a deduction, ordinary, necessary. I can get really broad with, with that definition. And that's what it's going to be. Um, we, we're not really limited to some few number of things that we can claim as a deduction or expense on our tax return. Okay, so now let's move on to uh, examples. And I'm just gonna list, list a bunch here and I'll maybe dive into a couple of them. Uh, one is vehicles, like I mentioned with the photographer, usually photographers gotta get to certain locations to, to uh, take the pictures. So vehicles, very common, common uh, expense item for them, the, the use of a car. Uh, insurance agents or realtors or, you know, uh, maintenance people who go fix refrigerators or any other thing like that. You got to, you know, travel to where you're going to do the work. So the, the vehicle becomes an expense um, and all of the money you put into maintaining that vehicle or fueling that vehicle is deductible for your business. All right, phones, we all need phones uh, to, to communicate. There's, you know, that's, that's gonna be ordinary and necessary in every industry. Equipment, uh, supplies, could be paper, cleaning, hard, you know, hardware, uh, 
pens, pencils, business cards, any, anything like that. Um, contract labor is, uh, you know, if you ever need to pay someone who is not, you know, part of your business to help you. So you might uh, need help, like say you clean homes for, for, you know, for your business and you need someone to go around to the home after you leave and make sure that it's locked up after you're done and you're willing to pay someone to do that for you um, on their own time. You know, if they're not an employee, they're, they're a contract laborer and you, you uh, can claim an expense for anything that you pay them. A lot of times we see these contract labor expenses like if you go to Upwork, for example, and you want someone to do a voiceover for you or you want someone to help you build a website or something like that. You're paying some freelancer out there to do these jobs for you. And that's, that's contract labor expense. Business meals uh, is a common one. You know, anytime you're going out to uh, lunch or uh, dinner or breakfast with someone and, and it has a business purpose behind it, you're talking business. Uh, with a customer or potential potent, or a potential customer or a vendor or potential vendor or you know a consultant or anyone that you value their input on your business uh, you can you can swipe the business card for that and and claim that as a deduction okay we'll move on now to travel uh, the travel is quite a big topic when you think about um, you know traveling for to go to uh, maybe a seminar or a conference or something like that. There's, there's a variety of ways to ensure that that travel counts as a business expense. In fact, we did a whole um, hour or half hour long webinar over the summer about how to turn your, your summer vacation into a business expense. And so to get all the details about kind of some of the rules about that, I. Go, go to our YouTube channel and check that video out. Um, it's, it's got some good advice and good tips there. But frankly, if you're ever traveling with a business purpose um, or could add a business purpose to your travel, then that opens up the door for, for possibly making the, the cost of uh, a plane ticket, lodging, um, and, and transportation while you're there, uh, a business deduction. Insurance is common, website and software common. You know, we're in today's, today's day and age, you know, we rely on technology heavily to, to do business usually. And so uh, there's always some component for the software you need uh, to get that done. Professional fees, such as like lawyer fees or even Mazuma's bookkeeping and accounting fees, uh, it's all deductible. It's, it's like getting a discount on, on your, your accounting fees by writing it off, but uh, that's a common one. Uh, taxes. <clears throat> this one is a little bit, uh, can be a little bit confusing because um, income taxes that you pay on your, your, you know, your personal tax return, those are not deductible as a business expense. Okay, even business taxes that you pay on your business tax return are not deductible as a business expense. But payroll taxes or state taxes that you pay are deductible as a, a business expense on your federal return. But, but the general rule is that federal income taxes are not deductible. So be careful a little bit with that one. Um, marketing and advertising, another common one. So if you're ever doing Google ads or, or those business cards I mentioned, that could be maybe supplies or could be marketing, or if you're, you're printing flyers or uh, you know, maybe even buying a list of leads from somewhere, all of those could be written off as marketing and advertising costs. Okay, there's a couple other, uh, just a little discussion about some additional deductions um, that are a little bit special. Capital assets are like big purchases that you make. Like for example, a vehicle is, is an example of probably a very common one uh, where if you buy a vehicle and you're gonna be using that vehicle primarily for, for business, then um, 
it used to be, well, it still is that that, that purchase needs to be capitalized. But it, and, and that means not expensed all at once, but taken kind of in a special way through depreciation over time. But it used to be that that depreciation have to happen like over five years. But now, um, under some favorable tax laws that were passed over the past few years, we've got what they call bonus depreciation that does allow us to capitalize that asset, uh, which, and when I say that, it, it really just means treating it a little bit differently than a regular supplies expense or marketing expense, like we saw in the bookkeeping earlier. Capital assets get treated a little bit different, but it's kind of beyond the scope of this conversation, but we capitalize the asset, but then we get to take the full, full cost as a depreciation expense all in up front in the current year. So that's that's one you don't want to miss out on uh, if you buy a vehicle for your for business use. Another common one that comes to mind is like dentists who buy um, you know maybe have to buy a new x-ray machine. Um, you know that could be like a fifty thousand dollar or more purchase that now under the current rules they get to deduct all at once. Okay, so capital assets are, is just a different, it's a, it's a different way of expensing large purchases. The next one we've got listed here is retirement contributions. Um, you might have heard of the SEP IRA or a 401k. These are ways to get, get profit from your business or compensation to you into a retirement account, into like a mutual fund or, or you know, into the stock market essentially uh, is the more common, the most common way to get that money out into your retirement account and get a tax deduction for it. Uh, so, so using these retirement plans, uh, the government allows you, the IRS allows you to, to take a deduction for those contributions. Um, that's that's one that you know maybe falls outside of that necessary um, you know uh, qualifier that the IRS defines because you know yeah you don't have to contribute to your IRA in order to stay in business but they've made special rules that that allow you to to contribute and take a deduction for it. All right, so most of what mostly what we've talked about is bus uh, business deductions. Uh, know that that's, that's really the primary focus of, of what we've been discussing. Um, there's a whole nother set of personal deductions that um, are different, right? That are not business deductions, not tax expenses that we can put on the business uh, return. But things, but things that we can claim on our personal tax return, okay? So some of those personal ones are like uh, the itemized deductions like mortgage interest, state taxes, uh, charitable contributions, uh, student loan interest, things like that, that are additional deductions. <laughs> Got deductions on top of deductions on top of deductions here that, that uh, need to be factored into your personal tax return. Um, before it's filed to make sure you kind of gone through the same exercise there and made sure that everything is captured to get your taxes as low as possible. Okay, some of the, the most of the questions that come up in relation to deductions have to do with these gray areas. Um, the vehicle is one I've talked about and it, it is a, a business deduction, but only the portion that you use that vehicle for business. So if you're using that vehicle for personal purposes, like to take your kids to school, then there's some portion of that vehicle use that is not being used for business and therefore should not be claimed on the tax return. So there's two methods for claiming the deduction for vehicle use on a business tax return. Um, and that is using the mileage or uh, the actual expenses. Mileage basically is simply you keep a mileage log and at the end of the year, you get 55 cents or I forget exactly what it is this year, but it's in that range 
55 cents per mile uh, of business per business mile driven. Okay. And that, that makes it really simple if you keep record of, of your business miles. The actual method is that instead of tracking your mileage and, and basing the deduction off of how many business miles you drive, you come up with a percentage of business use. And frankly, that does come back to the miles. So like if you drive 8,000 miles for business, but 10,000 miles total, uh, you put 10,000 miles total on the vehicle, then you've got 80% business use. And that means you get to write off or expense 80% uh, of all the gas, 80% of all the, in, the insurance expense, 80% of all the maintenance, the tires, the repairs. Um, and you get to expense 80% of the cost of the vehicle. So <clears throat> that's the actual method where you take the actual expenses, multiply that by the percentage of business use. So you have that allocation between personal and business that becomes important and that causes this gray area. Kind of the same idea with the home office. Uh, you've got a square footage method and an actual, more of an actual allocation method. The square footage, the IRS says, hey, we're not going to audit you on this if you just take the number of square feet that's dedicated to business space and multiply that by $5. We'll give you that kind of no questions asked. Now the problem is they only give you up to 300 square feet. $1,500 is the highest deduction you can get if you're using the safe harbor method. But it's still something and it's definitely uh, nice to know that you've kind of just done it the easy, simple way. The allocation is just like I was describing on the vehicle. You take the percentage of your business, uh, the percentage uh, that your home office, sorry, uh, takes out of the whole home. So if my home office is 100 square feet and my home is 1,000 square feet total, then 10% of all my utilities, all my repairs and maintenance um, become uh, the home office deduction. So that's kind of how those two work. So the blogger example that I threw out here is some, it kind of highlights how we need to be careful a little bit when we're spending money on things that have both a business and personal use. All right. So uh, say a, a food blogger, uh, you know, starts taking, doing recipes, making meals, taking pictures of those meals and, you know, posting them on their blog and they realize, you know what, those cabinets are looking pretty worn out. I need to redo my kitchen, redo my countertops, redo my, you know, get a new fridge and appliances because I want everyone who's reading my blog to see a nice new kitchen behind these meals that I'm, that I'm plastering all over my blog. And so the question becomes how much of that kitchen remodel uh, can this blogger who's doing this with a business purpose, right? Um, how much can that of that can be deducted? And that, you know, certainly some portion of it, so you, you know, they wouldn't do it if it was, you know, if, if they didn't have the blog. But the fact of the matter is that kitchen is used only a fraction of the time for pictures. Uh, the rest of the time, her fam, you know, his or her family is enjoying that nice new kitchen uh, personally, and it's, it's elevated their lifestyle and, and everything. So those kind of, uh, that kind of analysis has to be done and evaluated before you, know, you can just write off or, or decide how much of that expense, remodel expense is, is able to be deducted on the tax return. Okay, so we kind of know a little bit about how the deductions are claimed or how we track them through the bookkeeping, uh, how, how that, that expense being recorded lowers our profit and therefore lowers our tax bill. We've gone through a list of, all, of a variety of different deductions. What's the benefit? Well, it becomes really simple if you can figure out what your tax rate is. Because to find out how much your tax you're saving, 
by getting a deduction, all you have to do is multiply the deduction by the tax rate you're in, by the tax bracket that you're in. So if I, uh, you know, spend, if I'm coming up to the end of the year, it's kind of too late for this now, but if I capture an additional $1,000 in deductions, then I will save, if, and I'm in the 25% tax bracket, then I will save $250 in taxes. That's $250 less taxes than, than I would have had to pay the IRS if I hadn't found or claimed that $1,000 as a deduction. All right, so it's kind of like, um, as I mentioned, coming up to the end of the year, if I have projected my taxes and I, it looks like I'm gonna owe $10,000 in taxes, I might be looking, okay, how do I get that down? Oh, well, you know what? I do need, you know, I, I have been wanting to buy a, a new truck for my uh, plumbing business and, uh, you know, the trucks that I'm looking at, they're gonna cost me 20 grand and I'm in the 25% tax bracket. If I go buy that truck and it's all used for business, then I got a $20,000 tax deduction. 25% of that's 5,000. It's gonna knock my tax bill down by $5,000. I'm gonna make sure and do that by the, before the end of the year um, so that I capture that deduction. And so that, that is, it's like getting a discount on the truck, right? Like I paid $20,000 for it, but I saved five grand in taxes. So it's like I got the truck for 15,000. So those are the, that's the kind of uh, decision-making that this knowledge empowers you with, right? To, it, it empowers you to make better decisions, informed decisions, and also kind of shows you the importance of capturing all of those deductions. Now, one last note on the tax deduction versus tax credits. So we've been talking about tax deductions that reduce your net profit from uh, your business, right? So that's lowering your profit, which the profit is what's then taken and multiplied against the tax rate to get your tax bill, right? So deductions lower the profit so that when we multiply it by the tax rate, the tax bill is lower. Tax credits lower the tax bill. So after we found out how much tax is due, then a tax credit takes dollar for dollar taxes off of how much is due. Like for example, so if I owe five, if I've done my taxes and I've captured all my deductions and everything and got my profit down as low as I can and added up my W-2 income and all my sources of income and calculated my taxes due at $5,000. But I have a, a child who's a dependent and can claim a, a child, get a child tax credit for them because they're under 17, then I can save $2,000 of taxes uh, for, for with that credit. So that means instead of owing 5,000, I own, now only owe 3,000 because I get $2,000 tax credit. So hopefully, I just wanted to throw that in there a little bit so that you understand the difference between deductions and tax credits. Okay, well, we've gotten through a lot of questions and a lot of content today. Hopefully this was helpful for you. Thank you for coming. I uh, hope it answered some questions and got you on your way with some things. Uh, just a reminder that we do three webinars every month. Two webinars are Q&As where basically it's all just show up and ask your questions. Um, one is like this where we do a specific topic. Those Q&As are, are used are, uh, for clients of Mizuma. And uh, if you are a client of Mizuma, you can register for our web webinars through your Mizuma dashboard. It's up there in, in a little tile on the right-hand side. Our next webinar for Mizuma clients only is a Q&A webinar on March 17th, St. Patrick's Day at uh, 12 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. If you need more information, check out our website at mizumausa.com or log into your dashboard and ask the question. Thank you very much. This has been Signing Off.